Hi everybody, this is Eri here. Um, it's been a while since I've done anything and I really apologise, but there's been a lot of health stuff going on. There's also been Christmas, university. Um, at the moment I'm, I'm spinning a lot of plates and YouTube, to be honest, isn't at the top of my agenda. It's near the top, but I've got things that I need to do, which is prioritise my health. And of course, university. I don't want to get behind again so um, yeah I, I'm gonna try and do as many vlogs as I can as many games as I can uh, as much as I possibly can so I really appreciate your support and everybody and thanks for sticking by me through all of this there has been an update with regard to MEM1 it's been so slow so slow but um, on Tuesday this week I'm now filming this on Sunday the 20th um, on Tuesday I went to Guy's Hospital and I had an MRI scan and I needed the scan for the pituitary gland, something else I can't pronounce, and the thoracic area. I suppose they want to uh, scan my adrenal glands and my pancreas as well. And it went really, really well. The worst part was actually getting to and from London. It's a long way for me and the wife to travel. I mean, I suppose I could go there on my own, but to be honest, I do need support with me. And she's been fantastic. She's really helped me through a lot of things. And, do you know, when we got there and we got to the MRI department, as soon as I arrived, um, it wasn't busy at all. And uh, the receptionist was on the phone and then they said, I'll be with you in a minute. Then a nurse appeared and said, are you here for an MRI? Yeah, OK, we'll fill this out, filled it out. And she said, right, what, have you got your letters? Yep, yeah, here you go. Right, come through. And she showed me into a, like, a changing room and said, right, put the gown on, put the, the, like, the sort of um, maroon coloured tracky bottoms on. I was actually really early for my appointment and I and I sat down and I looked at my uh, my phone and I thought oh, I've got I've got over 10 minutes to wait so I thought I'd play a game um but actually scarcely had I set up the game that I was going to play I was called in they had to ask both for my written and verbal consent to allow for the contrast injection which allows um certain things to show up so they asked me again, yes, I'm happy with that. And they said, it'll just be a little scratch, put the cannula in. And um, I was then shown into a room. I was told to take my glasses off before I approached the machine. And I approached the machine and they said, can you lie on it, please? And of course I couldn't see properly, misjudged it and I ended up whacking my knee on it. But it was fine, it was fine. Um, so I, actually a lot of people get, you know, get claustrophobic in MRIs. I don't feel claustrophobia a lot I only ever feel sort of confined when there's a lot of people around me because I don't mind if I'm in like an enclosed area but not with other people but in this case it was just me on my own in that MRI machine um I was strapped into it I had sort of um things put over it. I can't remember what they are but they hold cameras and then my hands were put into these like sling like things I was given some sort of pump action ball uh, a bit like the old-fashioned you know uh, squeezy bottles for perfume so they said squeeze that if you know you need us to stop or, or whichever and I was moved into it up up and at the back of the MRI was much cooler I could actually feel the the ventilation it was slightly brighter but it wasn't too bright and then they pulled me out again <laughs> um Oh, and also they had actually put um, noise cancelling headphones on, to, on on my head and they said, oh, what radio do you want played? And I said, oh, Radio 1. You know, I really didn't think, couldn't think of anything. And um, so they just adjusted me a little bit and in I went and they told me to keep perfectly still and you're supposed to keep absolutely still in an MRI. And lots of people relax, but I, I stiffened my arms. My triceps were contracted the whole 45 to 50 minutes of this MRI. I didn't move and I had to hold my breath a few times the machine says to you breathe in breathe out and hold your breath and then it says breathe in breathe out breathe in again and then hold your breath um, I didn't quite do brilliantly with that but I tried my best and when it was over when I came out of the MRI it was actually brighter outside and uh, of course I could see the bright light through my eyes I kept my eyes closed the entire time and it you know a lot of people say that MRIs are noisy they are but they're not uncomfortably noisy I mean with the noise cancelling headphones you do hear it but it's it's annoying more than anything it's not deafening um, and when I was when I came out I was still very stiff and rigid I was kind of in a little bit of a shock because I was coming from an area where I knew where there was a big semicircle over me 
to outside and they're all taking the stuff and go, are you alright Erin, are you alright Erin, mm, mm, yeah, 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 and eventually I opened my eyes and I had to use my, my left hand to push myself off a of bed because my right arm just wasn't working properly and I was really dizzy afterwards and I had to be sort of guided back to um, a seat by the nurse so she could take the cannula out. Um, got changed again and, and off I went, you know. I still haven't had the results. I mean, it hasn't been even a week, so of course I won't have the results. Uh, but I did phone the hospital uh, two days ago. And I thought, you know what, it's been months since my blood tests. I haven't heard anything, you know, they haven't called me back or anything like that for any anything that happened. So maybe it could be that my bloods are okay. So I phoned them up. Uh, the doctor couldn't take my call, so they called me back a couple of hours later and said, your bloods are fine. My blood work is normal, all within range. I am so pleased about that. I was telling everybody all day, my bloods are normal, my bloods are normal. I was so, so happy. But the thing is with MEM1 is that some of the endocrine tumours can be what's called non-functioning, which means they are present, but they don't secrete or disrupt hormonal activity in the body. So they cannot be picked up on uh, with blood tests. That's why imaging is important. Um, non-functioning doesn't mean benign either. They could be either benign or cancerous. Um, so it could be that I have some non-functioning tumours already, um, but it's also a possibility that there's nothing going on at the moment. I'm just going to have to be monitored on an annual basis. I'm also part of a Facebook group for people with uh, MEM1 or have relatives with it or have symptoms but maybe not yet confirmed that they have the gene. And it shows up in various stages of age. I mean, there are some kids that see um, symptoms in their teens and some who have part of their pancreas removed before they turn 20. And some people don't see any symptoms until they're in their 40s or 50s. My birth mother died of cancer at 46 because of this gene. So for how long her tumours, which are slow growing, that the, this genetic condition um, results in slow growing tumours, how long were they in, in her? How long were they growing and metastasizing and um, causing havoc? You know, for, for her to not only get cancer, but for it to be terminal. So I'm 35 now and I'm really, really pleased that I know this about myself. But um, something I don't think I touched on on my last vlog was that it kind of feels a little bit like an identity issue because a genetic disorder or a gene that you carry has been there right from the moment of your conception. Every single memory, every single experience, every single moment of existence in your life has had this gene there but you didn't know about it until a particular point so it for me it really just kind of messed with who am I I I thought I was just physically normal I thought that nothing untoward was happening or would or could ever happen other than what happens to the general population but to find out that I have a genetic disorder that kind of uh, threw me a bit. And I'm adopted as well. There are many people out there who are adopted that don't know their family history. A family history can be really important. There are a lot of genetic diseases out there. I've spoken to some people whose parents um, have died or have become ill from genetic conditions and, and their kids decide not to be tested. Now, I can understand the psychological reason for that. Like, you know, not wanting to worry, not wanting to have it hang over your head. But with MEM1, Yes, there is a propensity for cancer, but it, along with that, comes with many other tumours that can cause many other problems that are not cancer, but can still make your life a misery. You can get kidney stones from hypercalcemia. Um, you can also end up with migraines and visual problems from pituitary issues. Your menstrual cycle, you can become infertile. It can cause diabetes. So to have procedures and treatment to either rid your body or purge it of the problems that these tumours are presenting can improve your quality of life. It can also extend your life. It can also make sure that you are able to do things for yourself and that you don't have to feel like crap anymore. It gives you back a bit more of your life. I have had a fear of doctors and health professionals 
all my life and only now in my 30s do I feel that it, I have actually combated it. While I was having the MRI, while I was in Guy's hospital having my test, I was nervous but I, I wasn't stressed and anxious out of my mind. I do feel like I could handle most things that could probably throw at me but I suppose none of us really know how we're going to react until we're in that position. Watch the space. I'll come back to you with uh, the results of my scan as soon as possible. I often post updates on my life and on my channel and everything that I do on my Facebook page and also on my Twitter page. The links are below. Please join me. I'm a member of the Deceitful Six as well. The links of their YouTube and Twitch channels are below. Please join them and our Discord server, which is really up and coming now. So please make sure that you check those out and um, I'll see you in the next vlog. Bye.